the soldier messiah back in on themselves to rethink and critique and appreciate anew these shrines of American civil religion. Thank you. If anyone has questions, if you'll raise your hand, I'll bring the mic to you. I don't always like to be the one starting it off, but um, I'm intrigued by the idea of the civil religion. I realize that this is mainly about the European. Oh, well, are there cemeteries in non-European, like uh, the legacy of the war in the Philippines, where McKinley was going to Christianize the Philippines, not knowing that the Spaniards had already done it with their cross and their sword? <laughs> the, well, the cemeteries that I'm looking at here are, uh, well, these are World War I cemeteries. There are, the ABMC is responsible for World War I and World War II cemeteries overseas. Uh, they have uh, one cemetery in um, in Mexico that's under their purview, not from those two, not from those two wars. But to answer your question about the Europeanness, um, from from World War II, there is a Tunisian cemetery and there is one in the Philippines. It's the largest in the ABMC system, the cemetery at Manila, Manila with roughly 19,000 Americans buried there. Hmm. Obviously, I was making another point. I'm intrigued by the idea of the civil religion and how. Uh, how this all uh, fits with the American way of war, actually, which is the broader uh, subject of the the forum. Mm -hmm. So, well, do you have a question pertaining to that? I'm happy to answer. Wow. Um, well, I, it's hard to formulate in one question. It just seems to me that Christianity and uh, certain formulations of it have been very useful in in uh, in propagating war. I, I come from Belleville, Illinois, where the Catholic uh, uh, sports team there is still called the Crusaders, so uh -huh. I've always thought about offering a campaign to change it since it would be like the Ramallah Jihadists, actually. Mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Well, I mean, there, there are a couple of things that I can say about that. On the one hand, these cemeteries, um, so they fulfill many, many purposes. Um, if we look at their ideological and the theological purpose, uh, we can see that they're, they're, they argue uh, strongly for salvation for the fallen American soldier, period. No room for consideration of, of moral shortcomings, moral failures, uh, no room for really individuality. By dying in service of the country, one is saved. Um, so that seems to me to be a very strong civil religious aspect of the cemeteries. Uh, additionally, they do a kind of compression of religious identity, such that a Catholic convert and a Pentecostal convert and a Baptist and someone who was raised as a Catholic but isn't a particularly uh, uh, particularly interested practitioner of the faith all become crosses. There is there there are kind of two things that one can be in an ABMC cemetery: uh, Christian and Jewish. And in ABMC cemeteries in World War for World War II, even some of the Jews are Christian. Um, let me clarify that. The, there was a change in policy having to do with the way that, that graves of unknown soldiers were marked in, uh, in World War II. In World War I, unknowns were marked in proportion, either Christian or Jewish, in proportion to the number of Christians or Jews serving in, in the American Expeditionary Force. The ABMC did away with that policy for World War II and marked all unidentified remains as Christian. So there is, it, as in, in these cemeteries, a uh, a sort of forced ecumenicity uh, with regard, uh, you know, to soldiers. I was wondering if you've been in any of the other European cemeteries for war dead. For example, I recall visiting a Russian cemetery in Eastern East Berlin during the 60s when I had to go through Checkpoint Charlie, practically, you know, they were practically doing what they do to you when you go through a security at airports now. <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> not quite. And, and, and I thought it was very interesting that as part of the tour, they took us to uh, in East Berlin and we were taken to this Russian mm -hmm. um, cemetery when I, we were just like shaken down by the Russians and <laughs> the, or the Soviet soldiers going through Checkpoint Charlie. But it, that cemetery was very beautiful, and it struck me. It didn't have, of course, the crosses, and it wasn't laid out the same way, but it was definitely a work of art. Yeah. And it was definitely, to the, the people buried there and their families, a very sacred place. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, yes, I have been to two German cemeteries, one from, well, three, two from World War I and one from World War II, and I have a picture here of, there, there's a German World War I cemetery. This is very close to Musargan American Cemetery, which has, is the largest of the European uh, American, the largest of the ABMC cemeteries um, in Europe. And this is a smaller, a, a smaller site. It has a beauty of its own. It, it's not cleared. The crosses don't dominate the way that they do in, um, in an ABMC cemetery. But it also doesn't benefit from uh, around the calendar care that ABMC cemeteries provide for their uh, grounds and their markers. So there are scenes like these where the, the stone has, has deteriorated or broken, and some of them are knocked over. Clearly, they don't have the same sort of Scots uh, seed that goes into the, into the soil and the fertilizer, so that the, there's crabgrass and patchiness and all kinds of, uh, you know, in sort of uh, landscape architectural impurities that one sees in the, in the German cemeteries. It's a, different, a very different aesthetic. Um, part of it intentional and then, and then the part that's just come about because the Germans don't maintain this particular site. Well, then I'd like to make a comment about you saying that they just laid people out right next to each other, whether they were officers or enlisted men. Mm -hmm. They continue to do that in cemeteries here in the United States, yeah. too, as well. And I think part of that is because they're all one. It doesn't make any difference what your rank was. When you're in a battle and, and you need to be doing things, the bullets will kill you whether you're a private or a general. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, my son is in the military and he's going on a mission where he will be one of the lowest ranking people in this unit. And that gives me concern because I think sometimes that the officers aren't always as smart as they think they should be. I apologize if any of you are high ranking officers. <laughs> but he has a lot more experience than some of the people he's going with. And he, he assures me, mother, that doesn't make any difference.